Hey there, I'm Sarita, and you're about to experience the modern approach to well-being where you get to establish the best and most important relationship you will ever have, the one with yourself. I'm on a mission to help you declutter energy and reclaim your power so you can be a magnet to what you desire. If you're looking for the optimal blend of mindset and healing, you're in the right place. My goal in this podcast is to share tools, resources, and practices that will help you along your healing journey. I'm so excited to be here with you today. So welcome to Back to Here with Sarita. Let's get started. Hello, my friend, and welcome to a very special episode of my podcast, Back to Here with Sarita. If you are new here, a warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for finding me and listening to this really beautiful piece of love that I like to serve up to you every other Monday. If you are catching me for the first time, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. I am Sarita. And I like to share with people kind of the identities that I'm recovering from. So I'm recovering and healing from some identities that no longer serve me. And that is a person who's a people pleaser and someone who has tried to control their outcomes. That's been in order not to get hurt. So I am a coach and my work within my coaching business is to help women drop those identities to help them gain like a better relationship with themselves because that is where it all starts, right? So what initially started out as a healing journey of mine has actually become fuel for my work. That's pretty cool. And I really, what I really desire, ideally what I really desire for women is to have them have an intimate relationship with themselves, like an intimate self-trusting relationship with themselves. That means letting go of a lot of the conditioning that we've been socialized to believe and take on, right? And actually, this self-love trusting relationship with yourself is the key to manifesting the life that you desire. That means that there is a deep, deep connection between self-love and our ability to be a magnet to what we desire. And when I realized this about a little over a year ago, I was like, why is nobody talking about this? This deep self-love connection to our ability to receive. And so self-love is the central focus of my work and is actually going to be the focus of today's podcast episode. It is Valentine's week. It is the day before Valentine's Day if you are hearing this episode on the day that it drops on Monday the 13th. So this whole week, this whole month really is about love, love, love. So when you think of self-love, 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 what comes up when you say those words to yourself? What comes up for you? What comes up authentically to your mind? What comes up in your body? And I will share in a moment what I believe self-love is, but I wanted to take a moment to really acknowledge that self-love is a really, really overused word, especially in mainstream marketing. If you haven't noticed already, (laughs) our beauty and wellness industry is probably the value of like around $25 billion or more. That's a huge amount of money. That means not only are there people investing in making themselves feel more beautiful, but also seeking ways to love themselves more by using products to make themselves, quote unquote, feel better about themselves. There are, if you think about that, 25 billion, right? That means there are millions of dollars spent per year by marketing companies that want you to love yourself more with kind of their own intention in mind, right? So what has happened? This is birth the notion that self-love is kind of this superficial thing, right? That we can utilize something outside of ourselves to make ourselves feel better and love ourselves more. And this has created this like phenomenon and like things you see on TikTok, on social media, at least, 
self love hashtags. Self love is the first love. Self love matters, right? Those are beautiful in some ways and can be really helpful for people to feel a little bit more worth, quote unquote, more worth using beauty products and wellness products that they probably didn't use before, right? Me included, totally. Like, I recognize now that my health and wellness and my vitality are really important to me. So you de- like using products, services, or tools that I probably wouldn't have used before um, have really helped me. What this is not, it, what basically has happened as a result of this is that this self-love movement has manifested a society of people that believe that you know sur- that self-love is something just on the surface. So they're barely scratching the surface of what self really is. They really don't know what the real meaning of self-love is. And quite frankly, I believe that it's manifested a lot of people that just really don't know themselves that well and are really disconnected from themselves. If you had a hard time answering the question of what does self-love mean to you, that's okay. Because you've been throwing around a lot of ideas of what self-love is. And it's okay because there's a lot of noise about that subject. Something to think about. Your view, opinion, and story about self-love will constantly be changing the more time you spend on getting to know yourself. For example, my version of self-love is way different than it was about three years ago when I was in a relationship living with somebody than it is now, now that I'm single. So what I'm trying to communicate to you is that everyone will have their own version of what self-love is. However, I want you to keep like mindful of that you get to decide what that relationship with yourself is. Not a marketing company, a beauty product, a wellness product, that person on TikTok, or even your best friend. So now that we've unpacked that, I want to share with you what self-love means to me. Self-love or loving yourself is knowing yourself, being rooted in yourself, trusting yourself, listening to yourself, coming back to your breath, coming back to here, choosing yourself, being with yourself. So let's unpack that a little bit. When I think of self-love, I can't help but not think of the word radical. I absolutely love that word radical. If you really think about it, loving, the act of loving is a very radical act, a very radical action. That act of deep loving and being loved is something that our society doesn't acknowledge actually takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to declare love. It takes a lot of courage to speak in love because it's so much easier It is so much easier for us to judge. It is so much easier for us to hate. It is so much easier for us to have these low vibrational energy emotions because you know what? It takes more effort on our part to be loving, to be kind, to to be all these higher vibrational states. It takes effort. So a lot of people don't acknowledge that Love takes a lot of courage. And if you think of any romantic comedy, just think of any romantic comedy that you like, there's always that one character, that one person that decides to share their declaration of love. And guess what they're coming from? They're coming from a place of courage. A lot of times people don't share love. They don't share these high vibrational energies is because they're scared to. Love is a lot of times is associated with rejection. Love is associated with getting hurt, right? We see that in so much of our books, in our movies and social media. The act of loving takes so much courage. So that is why it's a radical act. And if you look up the word radical, I love this. When you look up the word radical, this is a little um, etymology for you. When you look up the word radical, you will see that it comes from the Latin word originating from the root or ground. 
So in other words, rooted in. Think of a tree that has deep roots. Think of anything that has these deep roots that you can't see, but they're underground and they're deeply rooted in. So that means when we speak about radical love or radical self-love, it means having a grounded, rooted system of beliefs, these roots, beliefs in ourselves, this passionate love for ourselves, this grounded, rooted belief system of ourselves. So this goes way deeper than just the surface layer of looking in the mirror and saying, I love myself and self-love and hashtag. Again, not bashing that, just saying that we have been trained and believed to jump on board with this superficial self-love. I truly believe Being loved or love yourself and being worthy of love is being rooted in love. And it's loving. So self-love is loving the parts of yourself that you may hide. Self-love a radical self-love is investing in yourself when others may not. And that's like emotionally, energetically, physically, financially, spiritual, all the things, right? Self-love is also like two parts pushing yourself to be a better person, and then also having the grace with yourself in those moments. Self-love is cultivating a strong relationship with yourself, a very strong, deep relationship with yourself, the way you speak to yourself, the way that you communicate yourself with yourself is so important. And if you want to get a little bit more woo-woo because I'm into that kind of stuff because that's that this kind of podcast is that we are talking about wellness and healing, but we, we do throw in some woo in here. If you want to talk about the self in the non-physical form, the self that you don't see in the mirror, the, the self that you cannot see with the naked eye, having that relationship with yourself, the self that is at your most inner core, the self that speaks to you and that voice that a lot of times we can't hear because we are so conditioned to be listening to outside voices, outside noise, the self that speaks to you intuitively, that self that is connected to the higher cosmos. We talk about the the higher self and the ego self, right? The ego self is the self that is experiencing this life form in this 3D experience, right? We are very spiritual beings. And so we are connected to something greater and bigger than us, the higher cosmos, whatever you want to call it, universe, God, spirit, different dimensions, right? So having that beautiful relationship with yourself. So yes, That is what self-love really is. And for those of us that grew up in a time, a different time than today, right? We have (laughs) decades, like every decade, I swear, has been just so monumental in growth. Like it's it's insane, like how much we have progressed um, just with the rise of social media, you know, like within the last 10 years. So for those of us that grew up more than two decades ago, The idea of self-love can be a little bit more on the challenging side. And sometimes with, you know, watching TikTok and watching like reels and just being on social media following a lot of these, these people, I feel like this sometimes a little tiny twinge of jealousy that kids growing up in today's time actually have a lot more awareness and knowledge around self-love, boundaries, taking care of oneself than I did growing up. So subjects of therapy, mental health, self-care, self-love, empowerment, like manifestation are not like that new to them. However, they are bombarded with a lot of information. So what's important to note here is even though these subjects and experiences are more valued in today's society, there is still the possibility that these younger generations may find themselves a little bit more confused because they are bombarded with so much. And so for us people, I'm really dating myself here, but for most of us that are in our late late 20s and 30s and above, didn't get socialized to talk about self-love and our feelings. And so it can be a little bit more on the challenging side. 
Luckily for us, we get to speak about these things. And because we're at an older age, like having these conversations are a little bit more comfortable than if we were a child. Um, Or maybe not, you know, maybe not. But anyways, for us that are in our late 20s and 30s, sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging to talk about these things because we were socialized not to. And so for those of us, sometimes when we are so accustomed to not having our needs met, the flip side of that, prioritizing ourselves, can feel pretty darn selfish and awkward. But regardless, I am so grateful that we are having these conversations now. And in this day and age that they're like no longer a taboo subject. And I truly believe that self-love or love should be a very expansive not constrictive experience and if you listen to my episode that I dropped back on I think it was like January 16th you will know that my word for the year is expansion so as I shared in that episode I am all on board with that word expansion so before I end this episode I wanted to share with you a few ways in which you can start creating a little bit more self-love in your day-to-day One of the challenges that my clients have is finding time, finding the time to cultivate self-love. And guess what my remark is to that? We create time for the things that matter to us. The activities that we do, just think about it, the activities that we do, the energetic investments that we have in our lives, just think about those things. If it's spending time with family, if it's going to work, if it's like, you know, binge watching shows, if it's like whatever it is, all those things are a big indicator to what is important to us. So if you are the type of person who is doing things like doing things for yourself, if that means journaling, if that means meditating, if that means working out, if that means like eating healthy, like whatever it is, keep in mind that those things you are creating a relationship with yourself, providing yourself information saying, hey, I am important to me. That is the first step, really. Keeping in mind, the first step is actually carving out the time for yourself. And honestly, time is not that big, scary thing that we make it out to be. We think time is so linear, when in reality, it's a circle. It goes round and round. And a really, really simple reframe for yourself when it comes to making time for yourself, if you're having just the anxiety of, how can I make time for yourself? Really simple reframe. There is always time for me. Plain and simple affirmation reframe. There is always time for me. And yes, there is. Always. So here are three simple ways you can start to develop a closer relationship with yourself that you can actually start this week and they really don't take that much time at all. The first one is really, really simple. In fact, we can do it right now. It is putting your hand over your heart Taking a deep breath in and giving it out and just giving gratitude for being in this moment. Being in this moment with yourself. Doesn't that feel better already? So the next one is something we hopefully do on the daily and it's totally okay if you don't. Like I'm just kind of thinking of like new mothers that have like absolutely no time for themselves (laughs) is cleaning, doing some kind of activity of like cleaning ourselves. So uh, next time you're taking a hot shower, I suggest you run your hands over your body and give it love in all places. So this practice kind of started with myself not that long ago because I was noticing that during my showers... I was thinking about what I needed to do, what I needed to do next for the day. If I, depending on the time of day, I was taking a shower. If it was in the morning, I was thinking about what do I need to do next? Like, what do I need to prepare for? What's happening next? So not being in the moment, not enjoying like where I was under really nice, warm, hot running water. And what I didn't realize, it was just that simple availability of hot water Running water, for that matter, like running water, hot water, is something so simple that we can give gratitude for. Think of other places in the world when where there is like none of that. People don't have access to that. It's something that we can give gratitude for. 
And, you know, how often are we like fully unclothed apart from, you know, lovemaking and the occasional walking around, you know, naked in your home? We are not without clothes really that often. So taking the opportunity to really love on yourself during those moments is beautiful. So when the water is running all over your body, it's a wonderful time to really be present with yourself and love all the parts of your physical body parts you may not love that much or like that much right we all have that we all have those parts that we just maybe hide or just uh are not fully in love with and so this is such a great opportunity to take the time to send love to those parts of our physical body and thank them and you can do this via a shower or a bath i personally love taking baths in the evening that is my like de-stress decompression transition time into relaxation so I love doing that so again neither one of those two things that I just shared with you take extra time you're actually incorporating self-love within the time that you're already spending so the last one I absolutely love and I just started doing this a lot more on the regular I would do this like every once in a while when I was feeling like I needed to give myself an extra love however I have started doing this at the end of every month and I really love this practice and it's really simple it is writing a love letter to yourself thank yourself for being so amazing thank yourself for showing up for yourself thank yourself for being here right when we reflect when we take time to reflect and this is something I talked about in my first episode is when we take time to reflect on ourselves we celebrate we actually we get to acknowledge how much of a badass we really are so This time of year, you know, during uh, February, during Valentine's Day, we spend a lot of time with other people, like our significant others, like our children, whatnot, and uh, we are spending time with them, and then maybe we're writing them little, like, love notes, right, for Valentine's Day. This is a great opportunity for you to do that for yourself, and there is something so super empowering and kind of emotional, to be honest with you, about writing a love letter to yourself see what comes up if you want to do something really magical have not not just like sit down and write the letter but set the intention set up your space light a candle light some incense put your crystals around if you're into that kind of stuff get yourself a nice like you know drink that you like kombucha coffee tea wine you know whatever it is that you love and write yourself a really beautiful lovely love letter So here are those three things again, very simple. Number one, hands over heart, deep breathing, acknowledge yourself, love yourself. Number two, loving your body during a shower or a bath. Number three, writing a love letter to yourself, however that looks like. So we covered quite a bit in this episode and I would absolutely love to hear your insights and thoughts about self-love. Again, this episode is dropping a day before Valentine's Day, so that is the reason I'm really talking up the self-love. So please make sure to take a screenshot of this episode and tag me at Sarita Wellness with your thoughts. If you want to be a little bit more private, totally okay. You can send me a DM or send an email to info at saritawellness.com. I love emails and I love DMs from people. And a little extra bonus... When you do tag me in your stories or tag me wherever or leave me a review, I will send you 23 self-love audio affirmations with a very special note just for me. And those are absolutely amazing. The 23 self-love audio affirmations is, I believe, less than three minutes. It's a beautiful, they're beautiful affirmations that will allow you just to develop a nicer, beautiful grounded radical remember relationship with yourself and it's as simple as putting in your earbuds and listening to them every single day okay love i'm so happy you joined me today and i really hope that you enjoyed this topic around self-love and make sure above anything else to celebrate yourself this week celebrate yourself this week by getting rooted in that self-love however that looks like for you remember you get to define you get to create because you have that relationship with yourself nobody else gets to tell you what that looks like i've given you recommendations i've given you things that help me these may not help you these may be things that you can embellish on but i hope they're helpful 
I am so excited for my next episode coming up in a few weeks on the next, uh, not next Monday, but the following Monday, where I will have a special guest sharing their self-love journey. I'm really stoked for that one because that'll be the first episode that I have a guest on. I'm really, really excited to share that with you. Okay, love, it was amazing having you here today. Thank you so much for joining me on this really special episode around self-love. And we will see you next time. In the meantime, keep being the amazing you that you are. See you soon. Hey, love, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you adored what you heard, it would mean the world to me if you took a moment to leave a review on the platform you are listening to this episode on. By doing this, you are helping my mission to impact other women with their healing journeys. If you aren't already following me on social media, make sure to connect with me at Sarita Wellness to get your weekly dose of inspiration. I can't wait to be with you in the next episode, but in the meantime, keep being the amazing you that you are.